There once was a man named Jonah, or actually John, but he liked the name Jonah better. He was in the process of writing a book called The Day the World Ended, a story on the making and dropping of the atomic bomb on Japan. John decided to call up a past friend, Newt Honecker, who was a midget, and asked him to talk about what his father had to do with the atom bomb. Newt Honecker agreed. Newt recalled his father, Felix, was a part of the team that made the bomb. The day the bomb dropped, Newt says his father decided to play Cat's Cradle with him. Strange because Felix never played with his kids. He scared Newt away. Newt ran to his brother Frank, who was happening to make insects fight each other in jars. This event is key because it symbolizes Vonnegut's view that one who plays God never recognizes his subjects, and that the subjects praise him in vain. And then there was Angela, the oldest Honecker child. Then Newt fell in love with a Shmosha midget, who was a spy. After the interview, John travels to Ilium, where by chance of law, he runs into a lady by the name of Aza Breed, who happens to be Felix Seneca's old research facility assistant. She also claims that Felix had the nickname Secret Agent 9 with his childhood friends. Asa gives John a tour of the facility, and then John interviews her on the subject of Ice-9, a chemical compound Felix theorized that could freeze any standing water at room temperature. Ice-9 was developed as a solution to military men getting stuck in the mud. John questions Asa if Ice-9 actually exists, and she denies it, then ends the interview claiming scientists do not develop evil things for evil purposes. John then travels to Ilium Cemetery, where he meets Martin Breed, Asa's brother. He claims that when Emily Honecker, Felix's wife, died, that she never received a tombstone, so Martin had to give the children one for her. Her. On the contrary, Felix received a dinky little slab. Martin claims that he loved Emily, but hated Felix over the fact that he assisted development of the atomic bomb and thus claimed that he is no way innocent. We receive a flashback to when Felix Honecker died. Upon his death, the children divide about the sample of ice neither Felix had in possession. However, each child made great misuse of their chunk throughout adulthood. Angela gave up her chunk for marriage to Harrison Connors, a handsome scientist. Frank gave up his for the rank of Major General on the island of San Lorenzo. Newt lost his chunk when his lover Zinka, the Russian midget spy, stole it for the Russian government. John is then invited by the Honekers to join them on a flight to San Lorenzo. On this flight, there are the Crosbys, bicycle manufacturer entrepreneurs that are moving their workforce to San Lorenzo for the lack of labor restrictions on the island. The Mintons, more like being the assigned U.S. ambassador to San Lorenzo and not really liking the title. Also on board are Angela and Newt Honecker, flying to San Lorenzo to celebrate Frank's marriage to Mona Manzano. And then there was also John. As for Mona Manzano, she's the adopted daughter of San Lorenzo's leader, Papa Manzano, who adopted her for a popularity increase amongst his own people. Mona is an excellent xylophone marimba player and is also a devout Baconanist. Now what is Baconanism? A religion founded by Baconan, intended to be a mockery of all religions. For example, touching feet together will make you happy. The simple story of Baconanism is that God created the world and then created man to admire his work. Man questions God, what is the purpose of all this stuff, and God retorts with I leave you to figure out that out. Some god he is. San Lorenzo history lesson! San Lorenzo has always been a poor, worthless island that has been incessantly conquered over and over again by various countries. Baconan and McCabe shipwreck onto the island and easily take over. Again. Baconan creates Baconanism to comfort the inhabitants while instructing McCabe to outlaw it to make it more exciting to practice. And then McCabe goes mad and dies. What a dude. Every successor after McCabe continues the act of outlawing Baconanism, killing followers of that religion on a hook-like torture device. When the gang arrives, Papa Manzano tries to get Frank Honecker to become his successor, but Frank passes the offer to John, who initially refuses. Frank then offers Mona as a gift with presidency, and our gullible John fully accepts afterwards. Our gang then heads off to a ceremony to celebrate the 100 Martyrs to Democracy. In a nutshell, when World War II broke out, the attack on Pearl Harbor convinced San Lorenzo to declare war on Germany and Japan. So they took a boat, put 100 men on board, and set sail for the US. This was never meant to happen because a German submarine Marines sank the ship just as it left the port. Stupid campers. As our gang waits for the ceremony to commence, we learn that Papa is dead. His doctor, von Koingswald, deduces suicide, and John confirms the suicide by Ice-9 when Koingswald dies as well after touching a contaminated hand to his mouth. Our brave heroes carefully deduce the best solution to decontaminating the room to be setting a fire to everything, melting the Ice-9. However, they decide to hold on burning Papa's frozen body until after the ceremony. The ceremony commences under the hill of Papa's deathbed. Part of the ceremony pokes fun at the Air Force's might when they aim to shoot pictures of dead, evil leaders located in a nearby lake. Simple, right? But what's this? Oh no! An out-of-control plane is firing right towards the castle! It went kablooey! What's that blue thing? Papa's Ice-9 body, you say? And there's water right below the hill? 
Now let's think logically. If you take a drop of Ice-9, which freezes all water it touches into more Ice-9, and this process continues throughout not just the lake, but the plants, air, groundwater, and all the oceans of the Earth, and drop it into a lake, what happens? Well, this becomes this. But thank heavens for the power of love, as Mona and John survive the immediate fallout. Our heroic couple explores the island, eventually stumbling upon a crater full of frozen corpses of the island's inhabitants. Shortly after the discovery, Mona commits Ice Nine suicide, which devastates John. John eventually stumbles across a man who claims to be Bakonin himself. Bakonin says he told the island inhabitants to commit suicide, and each and every one of them did just so, proving his point on human stupidity. John claims Bakonin is evil, but converts to Bakoninism anyways. Our last survivors, who last a mere six months and eternally frozen over hell, are John, Newt, Frank, and Hazel and Lowe Crosby. During these six months, John writes his narrative, Newt paints, Frank studies the survival of ants, Hazel sews, and Lowe cooks. They all live shortly, quite grumpily ever after. The end.